to what is right and what is well, according to your word, Lord. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Alright, uh, Matthew chapter 4. Come to the close of what we've been studying. Bringing us back to where we were. Matthew chapter 4. And what we've been studying, was it was not in John. John didn't record it. The temptations of Jesus Christ. So Matthew chapter 4. Verse 10, then says Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, okay, we're coming back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. After the, Jesus is baptized, he's taken off for 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. And then he's tempted by the devil. And after the temptation, we come back to John chapter 1, verse number 35. John 1, 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, saying, Behold the Lamb of God. With a capital L, we saw that Lamb of God back in verse number 29. It says, Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. So that's twice it's proclaimed that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's the Passover. He's the Jewish Passover Lamb. And two of his disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Two of John's disciples. John had disciples too. So two of John's disciples have been following John around after John proclaims Jesus as the Lamb of God and Jesus shows back up. Two of his disciples now are following Jesus. And then Jesus turned, verse 38, and saw them and said unto them, What seek ye? Now that's the first time Jesus speaks in the Gospel of John. Was seeking. And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, or be interpreted, Master, that's what, rab that's what Rabbi means, it means Master. Where dwellest thou? And he said unto him, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and bowed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So, in verse 38, Jesus turns around and goes, oh, I mean, just plain simple words. What do you want? And they say, Rabbi, which means Judas, a Jewish title of, of master. And when you go back to Matthew 23, verse 8, Matthew 23, verse 8, We'll, we'll get for we're not going to be long on this. We're going to get to Andrew today. Matthew 23, verse 8. And when we come to this discourse here, it's an interesting study. Matthew 23, 8. And verse 7 will start. Matthew 23, 7. And greetings in the market to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Be, but be not called rabbi, for one is your master, there it is, rabbi means master, even Christ, that's Jesus, all ye are brethren. Call no man father upon the earth, for one is your father in heaven. Need it be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Rabbi, father, master, these are titles of religious people. The Jewish people are, are called rabbi, father, and we won't get into it, but you find that in Judges 17.10, in chapter 18, 2 Kings 2. It's a title of respect among the Jewish people. It's also a religious. In Judges, you find a man has hired a priest, a, a non-Levite priest, and calls him father. 
The Bible says no. So when you address a Roman Catholic priest as father, you are going against the scriptures. When you call a man a rabbi, Jesus said, I mean, I know they don't listen to the Bible. Rabbis don't listen to the New Testament. The Catholic Church don't listen to any of the Bible. And it says, verse 10, need to be called masters. That's your secret society. The highest realm of secret society is a master. So rabbi, ma father, and, and master, these are religious titles. That Jesus, no, you, you, you don't need to be doing that. There's one rabbi, there's one master, there's one father, and it's me, Christ. And we'll get into Christ next week, the Messiah. Back to John. So if I see a Roman Catholic priest, I'll say Mr., if not other thing. I'm not going to call him father. The Bible says not to call him father. And then the Bible says call no man your father. So what do you do with Father's Day? Well, you know, the title respect, dad, daddy. There's one God, one father in heaven. John chapter 1, verse 39. And he says unto him, come and see. And they, they saw where he dwelt. And bowed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. And then one of the two. This goes back to verse 37. Which heard John speak. John the Baptist. And follow him was Andrew. Simon Peter's brother. So Andrew. The man we're going to look at now. He's one of the disciples. He's only mentioned 13 times in 12 verses. He was original a disciple of John the Baptist. And then when Jesus comes on the ground, he begins to follow Jesus. Now, I mean, Andrew is interesting because every time you see Andrew in the Bible, as few as you do, he's always bringing somebody to Jesus. It's interesting. We'll look at it in a moment. So, verse number 40. One of the two which heard John speak, followed him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother, Simon, and says to him, We have found Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. We'll look at that next time. So, here is Andrew. Once a disciple of John, now a disciple of Jesus. And... His brother is Peter. Simon Peter. They're brothers. Uh, Matthew 4.18. We're going to look at we're going to look at Andrew. Though he's not mentioned much, he's like I said already, he's already a remarkable man because he's always bringing somebody to Jesus. We ought to be like Andrews. Matthew 4.18 And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brother, brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother casting a net in the sea, for they were fishers. So Simon, Peter, and Andrew are brothers, and they're fishermen. Now this is a little bit later on than what John chapter 1. I mean the Bible ain't laid out in chronological order. Uh, they meet Jesus and there's a, there's a time period probably going to where he, he fasted for 40 days and the devil tempts him and then Jesus starts his ministry and he comes up and here's Peter and Andrew. A lot of people have different views of what the time but this is coming to be Andrew and Peter. In Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 12, or 2, Matthew 2.10, and now the names of twelve apostles 
are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. So Andrew is also an apostle. Though little is mentioned about him. I mean, we've seen to see Peter, James, and John. We'll get to those men later. In Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Mark 1, 16. And we're going to see this over and over, but, you know, repetition puts it into our mind. Andrew's an important character, though he's not mentioned once. Mark 1.16, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, that's up north, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net in the sea, where they were fishing. Yeah, they're working, they're about doing their job. They're brothers. Luke 6.14. And we'll be going through the we'll be going through the Gospels and Book of Acts. Luke 6. Luke 6. That was in the wrong book. It's a big difference in uh, what book you're in. Luke 6, 14. Simon, who's, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John and Philip Barthelon. Now, verse 13, these are the, these are the disciples. Along with Peter, James, and John, Andrew is mentioned and named amongst the disciples and the apostles. Now the apostles, they grew in the Lord. After the service that Jesus Christ has gone into glory, right now they're disciples. And Andrew is one of them. That's, that's important. John 1.40 I mean, we cannot be little, Andrew. And as we read, one of the two, we don't know who the other one was. One of the two, John Spank, and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So Andrew is one of the... I don't stop earliest uh, disciples, apostles of, of Jesus even before Peter. Andrew goes, gets Peter and brings him to Jesus. And then later on they're out there fishing the Sea of Galilee and Jesus is out there and he calls the two. And then John chapter 6 verse 8. I said the characteristic with Andrew is he brings people to Jesus. And the Bible says one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's son, our brother, excuse me. So Andrew is a disciple, the apostle, and he's Simon Peter's brother. And they're fishermen. And he brought Peter first. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, Andrew, his brother, casting a net in the sea. They're fishermen. Now, I don't think, I don't want, 
there's just too much to get into Peter. I don't think we're going to take the time off to look at Peter. I think we'll look at Peter as we go into gospel because there's just so much about Peter. Um, look at Mark chapter 1, verse 29. Mark 1.29 And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, that's where the Jews met, the synagogue came after the Babylonian captivity, they entered in the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, but Simon's mother, wife's mother was sick with fever. Peter and Andrew are disciples, they're brothers and sisters, brothers, I don't want to say sisters, brothers, and Simon and Andrew have the same house. They live together. And it's funny, what they say, the first pope had a wife. Though the pope today said, you know, sodomites can get married. That guy don't know what the Bible says. So Simon and Andrew are not just brothers, they're in their adulthood. Andrew's living with Simon and Simon's wife. Now there's never anything said about if Andrew was married or anything. So these two men were together, they were brothers, and they were disciples, they were apostles, they were servants of the Lord. Andrew brought people to Jesus. Um, Mark 13, 3. I mean, there's much, but there's little about Andrew. Mark 13, 3. Now, this is Mark, this is the same, this is the same thing in Matthew. You know, Matthew 24. Oh, the sign of the time. What's the end of the period of the sign of time? Everybody knows Matthew 24. But watch. Mark 13, 3. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, over against the temple, Peter and James and John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us what these things shall be. What started the great concourse of Matthew 24, the end times. One of the people that asked Jesus the question to give us that great disclosure is Andrew. I mean, Jesus started saying about the end times, and Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, they're all, Peter and Andrew are brothers. James and John are brothers. They're all fishermen. They come up to Jesus also tell us. What are the end times? Andrew's cred credited for asking Jesus. So Andrew would question Jesus when he didn't know something. He's there. He's not a silent apostle. He's not the silent disciple. He's there. John 1.44 He was martyred at his death. John 1.44 Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So Andrew and Peter lived in the same house and they lived in Bethsaida. Well, for a man not mentioned much in the Bible, we sure know much about him. And it's important. God said, listen, God tells us where Andrew and Peter live before he even told us the birthday of Jesus Christ. That would be important. Acts 1.3 Acts 1.3 
Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Alright, Jesus Christ has suffered, he's died, he's been buried, he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Acts 1.13, verse 12. And returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, that's Mount Olives, which from Jerusalem is about a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they were all they went up into the upper room where they abode with Peter, James, and John, and Drew. So after Jesus Christ is ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, as the apostles go out in the book of Acts, there is Andrew there in the company with them. He's there, he's working. But he's one of them men that, you know, he's not mentioned much. Doesn't mean he's not important, because there he is. He's seen the ministry of John the Baptist, and he's seen the entire ministry of Jesus Christ, and he watched Jesus be ascended up to heaven, chapter 1. That says much for him. Now he brings people to Jesus. Back to John 1, 40. John 1, 40. We're going to watch three people that he brings to Jesus. Andrew, and I get, listen, with the attitude we're reading about Andrew right now, he brought more people to Jesus. I mean, he worked throughout the book of Acts. He's a martyr of the Word of God. So he brought more than three people to, to Jesus Christ. But what is written in the Scripture? Three people. There are many, many Christians that haven't even brought one person to Jesus. 140 again. John. One of the two which heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother Simon and says to him, We have found the Messiah. Peter, we found the Messiah. And we'll get into Messiah next week, Lord willing. Peter, we found the Messiah. Come. Before he even meets with Jesus, hey, Peter, come on. Here he is. Let's go. Let's go talk to him. That's remarkable. Because Christians don't even introduce the Savior to people. John 6, 8. I said, I, we're, I don't think we're going to do one on Peter. We may do one on James and John. But Peter, I think we'll do as we go through the Scriptures. I mean, Peter would be just time and time. John 6, 8. Now, we all know about the feeding. My Bible open. John 6 8. Wait for the wind to die down. This is the feeding of the 5,000. I think it's 5,000. Yeah, 5,000, verse 10. But look at John 6 8. And this is he, and this he said to prove him, for he, said, for he himself knew what he would do. Now verse 5, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great multitude come unto him, and said unto Philip, What shall we buy bread that we may eat? Well, we're going to feed all these people. Now Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Verse 7, Philip answered and said, 200 pennies worth of bread ain't sufficient, God. <coughs> Philip said, we ain't got enough. Are you crazy? Watch. One of his disciples, Andrew, 
Simon Peter's brother, okay, we got, we got to get, okay, we got it, Simon Peter's brother, says unto Jesus, him, uh, this, is, this is Andrew, there's a lad here which had five barley loaves and two, we know the story of the five barley loaves, the little boy and the five barley loaves, right, and two fish each. Do we know the story? It was Andrew that brought him to Jesus. Five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Even, even Andrew's like, that's not enough, Lord. We got a little boy here, he's got five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, make him sit down. Now there was much grass in place, so men sat down, never about five thousand. Jesus took the loaves. Jesus had to take those loaves from that little boy, and that little boy came to Jesus because of Andrew. That little boy got a blessing that day because they gathered 12 fragments of basket. Andrew brought the little boy and the little boy saw the miracle on how his five barley loaves and his two fishes fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. That's quite a good job, Andrew. And then, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 21. I mean, I know, I know there's a hymn, Dare to be a Daniel. I think we need to have a hymn about Dare to be an Andrew. You, you ain't going to the lion's den if, you're, if you can't witness for Jesus. Daniel went into the lion's den because he was a soldier for Jesus. If you're not going to witness to people, you're not a soldier of Jesus because that's one of the first commandments Jesus told us. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. John chapter 12, verse 21. The same came therefore to Philip, oh well, there's Philip again, which was the Bethsaida of Galilee, that's where Andrew and then lived, desiring him that they they say, Sir, we would love, we would, we would, we would, we would see Jesus. Now they're Greeks in verse 20. Gentiles come up to Philip and say, Philip, we want to see Jesus. Verse 22. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Here's Andrew bringing Greeks, Gentiles to Jesus. And there are more than one. So look at verse 20. It says Greeks, plural, S. So Andrew brings a little boy to Jesus. Andrew brings Peter to Jesus. Andrew brings the Greeks to Jesus. And Andrew, tradition says, uh, he was crucified in Achadia. A-C-H-A-I-A. -A -A. Listen, he would only have been crucified for one reason, for serving the Lord and the Word of God. Now, in other words, Andrew, they say, hung on a cross. And then don't go believe in all that nonsense about St. Andrew's cross and all that other junk. That has nothing to do with nothing. But they say Peter was crucified upside down. Jesus, Andrew, and Peter, according to tradition, well, we know Jesus died on the cross. Andrew also suffered on the cross. Andrew brought people to Jesus. Andrew was a disciple. He was an apostle of Jesus. After the, after the accession of Jesus to the right hand of the Father, Andrew's there in the upper room Getting ready to do, well, we got to find the, the disciple or the apostle to replace Judas. So, here's a disciple of John the Baptist, now a disciple of Jesus. And all the great things, he's not mentioned much. 
12 times in the Bible, but look at the 12 wonderful times he is mentioned. And if it wasn't for Andrew, Simon would have never met Jesus. That's our study today. Next week, Lord willing, we'll get into the Messiah. Because Andrew says, Peter, we found the Messiah. That's the first time the word Messiah shows up in the Bible, in the New Testament. And we'll get into that, Lord willing, next time. But that's Andrew. Very limited times, but very important man in church history. And yet a name that's really not mentioned at all in the pulpits. And the guy was a witness. And then you wonder why many church people don't go out and witness. What about Andrew? Lord God the Father, I thank you for a testimony of a man like Andrew who went out and brought people to you. Lord, may I be like an Andrew. Lord, may I bring people to Jesus. May you be pleased with me. Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. We thank you. It's a short study today, unusual for me, Lord, but I thought I hoped it was a good one. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. That's Andrew.